Hi everyone, welcome back. This is going to be my yearly Q&A. For whatever reason, usually in June or July, I always end up filming a Q&A. And it just gives you guys an opportunity to ask me questions that I may have not potentially answered in any chatty videos. So let's get right into it. I gotta say, I was pretty annoyed when I went to my community page on YouTube and noticed that uh, from last year's uh, request for questions, there was one that was marked as spam that had like eight questions in it. And I was like, this isn't spam. There's a lot of questions in this one, so I'm gonna try to skim through them a little bit quickly. Um, they were sent in by Tihana. Uh, she asks, which places in Canada would you recommend for a visit? Um, well, I live in Toronto, so I would definitely recommend Toronto because there's so much to do here. There's so many different neighborhoods and there's so much variety in terms of food and going out. Um, that I would recommend Toronto for sure. But since I grew up in Ottawa, I will always have like a little special place in my heart for Ottawa. The running joke about Ottawa is that it's the city that fun forgot, but, and, and maybe that's sort of true if I had lived there in my 20s, but I spent my childhood there and I learned how to ski and snowboard and figure skate and I did all the winter activities outdoors and I just have really good memories of growing up in Ottawa. So I would always recommend that people visit there. It's actually shocking the number of people from Toronto that have never been to Ottawa. It's just kind of ridiculous because everybody in Ottawa always eventually visits Toronto, but Toronto almost never goes to Ottawa at all. So those are two places I would recommend for sure. I love Montreal. The nightlife there is incredible. But um, I mean, there's a lot to see in Canada. Like I remember going to like, PEI when I was a kid and loving that too because the red roads and the vistas there are gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I, I've never actually been out to the west coast. I've never been to Vancouver. I have no idea what any of BC is like, but I hear that that's very nice as well. What are Canadian stereotypes and how true are they? I mean, there's a lot, I suppose. The ones that ring true for me is that we say A. I say A all the time, so that's a stereotype that's true. Uh, we do have bagged milk, but that's more of a um, Ontario sort of thing. I believe other provinces have switched over to like milk cartons and big jugs, um, but we still have milk bags here in Ontario. Um, we're not all lumberjacks, for sure. We don't live in igloos, obviously. And it does get actually friggin' hot in Canada, uh, but it also gets very cold. Like, I think it's, I don't know, what is it outside today? 35 degrees, which is Celsius. I have no idea what it is in Fahrenheit which is very hot, but uh, it can also go down to minus 35 Celsius as well. So we've got the range on both sides, very, very hot and very, very cold. The next question is, are all of your schools bilingual? No, they're not. We have something called French immersion, which I think is more common in Ottawa than it is in Toronto. I only went to like primary school and high school in Ottawa, so I don't, I can't comment on other cities, um, but I went to French immersion and French was the primary language that we spoke until I think grade seven. And French was my first language, although I speak English much better than I do French right now, which is kind of a little bit embarrassing for me because I wish I still spoke French as fluently as I used to. Uh, but no, not all schools are bilingual, but you can choose to put your kids into French immersion and then they will just eventually absorb the French language and be able to speak it too. What's a typical or traditional Canadian food or meal? I guess poutine would be the one that we always talk about, which is fries with cheese curds and gravy on it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I have found some poutines to be quite nice. I'm just, I don't like gravy in general, so it's not something I usually gravitate towards. Um, a more typical Canadian, a French Canadian dish would be a tortillard, which is basically a meat pie. Uh, my grandmother used to make that all the time. Um, Nanaimo bars are also Canadian. Uh, that's not something I eat very often, but it's kind of like a dessert square type thing. Uh, what else do we have? I mean, there's probably some things that are Canadian that I don't even really realize, but those are the ones that come to mind. What is your profession or job? So I work for a national bank in Canada and I work in marketing there, but that's a relatively new-ish position to me. I've only had it uh, about a year and a half or so. I did spend about 10 years in communications before that at the same bank. I've actually worked at the same um, bank for 17 years now, which is kind of wild because I never really thought that that would happen. I started when I was 20 and now I'm 37. When, how, and why did you get into makeup so much and what was your makeup journey like? Wow, I feel like that could be a totally different video. 
Um, but I'll summarize it. Uh, when I was 12 years old, my aunt took me to a MAC makeup counter in the Bay because I needed to get makeup to wear for figure skating uh, performances for competitions. So I remember we got um, the shade Ho. Uh, it was a brown eyeshadow. I think I got the shade Orb 2 and that's what I would wear all over my eyes, which honestly is not that much makeup that I, now that I really think about it. Um, but that really got me into makeup and it was with MAC too, which is just funny because everybody talks about how MAC got them into like makeup, right? So it definitely kind of took shape from there. Through my teen years, I just started to wear more and more color all the time. I remember having blue eyeshadow that I would wear all the time, purples, greens. I just really fell in love with the colorful side of makeup at a very young age and I just never really grew out of it, which makes me happy because I feel like a lot of people, the older they get, they just sort of gravitate towards less fun colors. And that's not true for everybody, but I remember talking to my mom about it one time and she's like, you know, over time I just, started to wear more natural colors as opposed to blue eyeshadow and I was like I remember thinking I'm like I hope that never happens to me and so far it hasn't and uh, fingers crossed it never will. Uh, the next question is who is your favorite pro makeup artist and why? So I have to say I don't really have one. I have never really followed that side of makeup. I've always followed like I guess you would call it the influencer side of things. I've always been impressed by Instagram artists. Um, there's never really been like a pro like Charlotte Tilbury or Pat McGrath that I just always followed and always loved. I came at it more from the social media side of things about, I don't know, 10 years ago when I started watching YouTube. Um, so there was never a pro MUA that I was really taken by. If I had to pick one right now, and I know she does makeup, but I don't know how pro pro she is. I mean, I guess she does photo shoots. That makes her a pro. But um, Midnight Weirdo on Instagram does some of the most inspiring looks that I have ever seen. And I got get a lot of inspiration from her. But that doesn't seem like a celebrity artist that anybody would know of. So that's the only person that I can really pinpoint. Do you collect in other areas of your life? Books, music, films, clothes, etc. cetera. Uh, not as much anymore. I used to collect Nancy Drew books, like the original Nancy Drew mystery stories. Um, but I don't have all of them now, although I've got a decent collection of them. Um, is there really anything else? I don't think so. Like, I buy TV shows that I like, or at least I used to. Um, I don't, no, I guess I'm not really a collector of other things. Am I really even a collector of makeup? I don't know, because that's one of those things where it's like, there's so much out there that a collection at some point should feel complete. But with makeup, it's never going to be complete because you're never going to own everything. Do you like nail polishes? And if yes, which are your favorites? So I'm in love with OPI right now. I almost don't want to try any other brands just because I'm so comfortable with their formula, the shape of their brush, and how long it lasts on my nails. Um, this is a fresh paint today, but I can easily get like a week of wear out of one of their polishes with a top coat on it, which I use Seiche Vive. Um, so OPI has just become really my favorite brand, which I realize is such like a typical brand to say, but I, I just love their colors and the polish really works for me. How do you de-stress when you don't do makeup? Uh, I don't know if I find makeup de-stressing. I'm not a very stressed out person to begin with. I don't really experience stress the way that other people seem to. A lot of people seem stressed all the time and I'm just like, okay, nothing is really stressing me out. I mean, we're in quarantine right now and I'm starting to get a little bit like, a little bit nutty and just kind of, you know, maybe that's stress, but like, I feel like everybody's going through that right now. Uh, in general, I don't feel a lot of stress and I don't really feel like I have anything that I do that de-stresses me just because I don't have a lot of stressors. I mean, I work out, um, I guess that would be considered one. And maybe because I work out so consistently, I already use that as a mechanism for de-stressing. I just don't really know about it. Sorry, that did not answer the question very well. Uh, Sam I Am says, things you wish were available in Canada that aren't. Doesn't have to be makeup. Oh, there's so much available in Canada now that I don't feel like I've got a lot to mention. As soon as I said that, things started to pop into my head. Target. I love Target shorts, Target t-shirts. They have amazing things to purchase and Target flopped in Canada so hard. In Toronto, I remember the shelves being like 50% empty. 
so there was almost nothing to buy. They were here for how long? And then they like moseyed on out of Canada just because they weren't making enough money. So I wish we had Target. I wish we had Trader Joe's too. The spices from Trader Joe's, this is such like a basic white girl thing, but that everything bagel, everything bagel seasoning, spice, whatever it's called, is beautiful. <laughs> so good. I think there actually is a replacement here now in Canada, but I feel like it's a Costco thing only and I don't have access to a Costco. Um, but yeah, I really wish like that mushroom umami spice was here. That's a Trader Joe's thing. The chili lime one's really good. There's just a, the garlic salt thing. There's a lot of really good spices at Trader Joe's that I wish we had here. I also wish that there was a Bath and Body Works shipping warehouse in Canada because if you're ordering from them, you're ordering from the US and that means that there's a potential that you're gonna be paying customs and duty on it. Now, I've only just recently ordered from Bath and Body Works from the US because I got pretty desperate because I'm not going to a mall anytime soon. I don't want to. Uh, and I'm hoping I don't get drilled with duties, but there is a risk. Audrey asks, how did you and your husband meet? Just being nosy. I don't think that's nosy at all. Like, I feel like people are worried to ask personal questions because some people are pretty private. I'm not that private. Uh, we actually met in World of Warcraft. So uh, that's a MMORPG for anybody who isn't aware. It's a video game where you play with tons of people online. And we met um, through the game, but more specifically on a message board for Paladin Tanks. It was called Main Tank It In. The board is not around anymore. Um, but we connected that way because we were both playing the same class and role and um, we had a community where we could all chat about how to play the game better and that's how we met. Danielle asks, what are some types of products you basically stopped using during COVID-19? I, I think I've worn mascara twice in the last four months. Well, I am wearing mascara because I am still filming, which is nice. I like to be able to at least still play around with my makeup collection because otherwise it'd just be sitting there gathering dust and like have absolutely no functionality for me, right? Um, what are things that I've stopped using? I'll tell you what, I haven't put on a real pair of pants in uh, four or five months now. Everything that I put around my waist has been elasticized. I've gone to the gym a few times in my condo because they just reopened that. Um, so I've been wearing like yoga pants and sweatpants and I am dreading the moment that I have to put real pants on again, but I think it's gonna be a long time until it happens. I guess pants aren't really a product in terms of makeup. <laughs> um, but that's the only thing that I could really think about that I'm just kind of like, oh, that's gonna be rough. Carla asked, have you ever been to Newfoundland? Okay, so I thought I had, but now I'm not sure. Um, my parents and I and my brother took a trip to Nova Scotia and PEI when we were very young. Um, and that's when I kind of learned about Anne of Green Gables and all that kind of stuff. But, and I thought we'd gone to Newfoundland, but now I'm wondering if my memory is just flawed of that and that we never actually went there. My mom has been watching these videos though, so she might be able to tell me if we've actually been to Newfoundland because I thought we had, and now I'm worried that's it's not the case. And I've been telling people that I've been there. <laughs> Shauna Ray asks, what is your favorite palette ever? <laughs> uh, okay, that's, that's a tough question. I think I'm gonna go with ColourPop's Chasing Rainbows. I think that's my favorite. Mama Deb Beauty asks, have you ever visited Massachusetts? I don't think so, but this might be one of those places that my parents and I went on a road trip because we did like the east coast of the US when I was like uh, 14 years old, I think, maybe 13. And it might have been one of the states that we went through, I just don't remember it. I don't remember going there if that's the case. She also asks, uh, would you ever form a friendship with someone online from one of your subscribers? Just curious because I have. Absolutely, and I have done. Uh, the one I've probably talked the most about is Dominica, whom I met in England last year uh, when I was there visiting with my friend Julie. And she was one of the first subscribers that I remember having like real dialogue with and just talking back and forth with. Um, we've added each other on Facebook kind of thing, so I feel very comfortable calling her a friend. Um, there have been other people that I've met as well. Like I am generally up for meeting people if they happen to be in town, if I've already had like a significant amount of back and forth with the person because I want to get to know who they are too, right? Like, I'm not scared to meet people from online. I've been doing it for a very long time, but there has to be some sort of a connection too because I wouldn't just agree to meet up with somebody whom 
had only ever left me one comment, right? So I wouldn't get to know them a little bit better because I want to be comfortable with meeting that person too. Um, so I am definitely cool with making friends with my subscribers, um, but there has to be a back and forth, right? Like it can't just be like, everybody has these viewers who just watch them and feel like they know them but never talk back because there's tons of people that I watch constantly on YouTube and I feel like hey I really sort of know this person but they have no clue who I am because I have never sent them a message I've never commented on a video for example um, so that's just one of those things where yeah I would absolutely form a friendship with someone online for my subscribers but it has to be a back and forth thing like it, it can't just kind of come out of nowhere Okay, moving on to some questions from Instagram. Um, Little Tyrone says, what age were you when you started wearing makeup? So I mentioned the story about my aunt taking me to Mac when I was 12 years old. So that's my like super solid memory of wearing makeup, but I know that I must have worn some kind of makeup for my jazz dance routines when I was younger, so like seven or eight years old. Um, but it was all my mom's kind of makeup. There was a lipstick that she had that I remember what it looked like it was probably like this red lipstick color um, maybe slightly pink tinge to it but it was in like this weird yellow tube um, and I was always like that's the lipstick I always wanted to wear but I couldn't tell you the brand on it I just remember the taste of it it had that awful like old lipstick taste that everything used to taste like but I really liked that color maybe my mom remembers what tube that was Okay, Leah has a bunch of questions. Uh, what is your best travel story? Like, do you have a trip that might have gone horribly wrong, but it is one of your favorite travel stories to tell now? Yes, I do. Okay, so uh, I was visiting uh, Dublin, Ireland for the first time. Been there several times since. And um, I had gone there, gone to Ireland with my family, but we broke off because I was going to be meeting um, a guy f from the internet who would eventually become a serious boyfriend of mine. We're, we haven't been together for quite a while now. Um, but I was meeting up with him and his friend who were also going to be in Dublin around the same time. And we had all previously met in New York City before, so it wasn't one of these weird things where my parents were just like dropping me off kind of thing and I'm meeting some stranger from the internet uh, because they had already met him a f the year before in New York. Anyway. Um, I meet everybody from online. That's where the bulk of my friendships come from. So, uh, his plan, anyway, I need to get to the end of the story because that's where it starts. So we had had a weekend together in Dublin and then his flight was taking off the day before mine was, um, but my flight was going to be taking off from Belfast in Northern Ireland. So, uh, when I put him on his plane, I got back to my, um, I guess it was a hostel at the time and there was no clock in the bedroom but i know the hostel could do wake up calls so um i didn't have any kind of alarm i had no cell phone because this was like man how old was i i don't know 21 22 like this was a while ago uh, so there were no cell phones i didn't have a clock that could wake me so i told the front desk the next morning i'm like you need to wake me at 6 a.m because I need to get on a train from Dublin to Belfast in order to get on a flight that was taking off from Belfast to go back to Toronto. And they said, sure, no problem. We will do the wake up call in the morning, uh, 6 a.m. Uh, it never happened. <laughs> I woke up, I think it was, I'm gonna guess the time. I'm gonna, let's say the train was taking off at eight in the morning and I woke up at 7.30. I woke up, the sun was up really bright and I was like, this doesn't make sense. For 6 a.m. it should not be this bright and I um, turned on the TV, which only had American stations, which to this day makes absolutely no sense to me. But I could see the time said that it was like 2 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time and with the time conversion I was like, well that's like, or I guess it was 2.30 a.m. That's 7.30 in the morning and I should have been awake like 90 minutes ago. So I called the front desk, I'm like, what the heck is going on? What time is it? Like what's going on? No one called me. And they were like, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. And I was like, okay, I need you to order me a taxi because I have to get to the train station like immediately. Like I had no time to do anything. I threw everything in my bags. Um, and they were like, sorry, the taxis are on strike today. And I'm like, what 
the hell? You didn't wake me up. The taxis are on strike. I didn't know how to use the local transit system and I definitely didn't have time to wait for a bus. So I was like, I'm gonna get my butt from the hostel to the train station because uh, I'm very good with locations and my own internal GPS system is quite solid. I can always figure out where I'm going in a city because I had an already general idea of where the train station was. So I grabbed all my stuff together. I think I'd already paid for my room. I ran out and started running to the train station with my, I guess I was traveling with like a soccer bag because it was one of those horrible duffel bags with a strap that if you're wearing a lot of heavy stuff in the bag, it just like drags on your shoulder. Um, so I started running to the train station because uh, I had to get this train up to Belfast or I would not have made my flight. Uh, running to the train station and the snaps on my duffel bag broke. So this strap that's like holding everything up together just broke completely. So I like, I don't know what I did with the strap. I threw it in the garbage, grabbed the handles of this super heavy thing because I was carrying back eight pint glasses of Guinness, like pint glasses. Uh, it was super heavy, it was filled with my clothes and shoes and all that. And thankfully those glasses didn't break, which is kind of wild but I'm grabbing it and holding it with the horrible handles and running to the train station. I bought the ticket just in time and it was one of those moments where I like slid onto the train at the same time that the doors were closing. And let me tell you, I sat down on that train breathing heavily, sweating profusely, but so relieved and so proud of myself that I had made it because now I knew that I was within a safe time constraint to make it to Belfast and to get my flight back to Toronto. But that was such a stressful situation. And honestly, to this day, that story still makes me smile. And I realize that I'm still rambling on and on about it, but I really love telling the story. Just because I was so young, I had no access to really anything, no internet, no cell phone, no taxi. I just had this map in my head of where the train station was in comp uh, relation to my hostel and I freaking made it there. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just proud of myself. So it's, that's one of those stories where I'm just like, yes, I did it. Leah also asks, what is the best part about living in Toronto or in the middle of any bigger city really? Um, it's just literally having access to so many things. I have access to all kinds of different varieties of food and restaurant and takeout. I have the ability to go play on any kind of soccer team that I choose. I could play on some co-ed team, which I have done through the winter months. Or I can go play um, like l ladies soccer if I want to do that. It's been a long time since I've done that and played soccer competitively. I currently play on a queer friendly league and just being able to be in that environment is so freaking nice. Uh, I don't feel like smaller cities really have that kind of ability to pick and choose what you want to do. I'm able to rollerblade to a lot of places if I want to, like I rollerblade to and from soccer. Well, not this summer because that's not happening. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of access to everything, but at the same point, living in a big city with no car can feel like you don't get to explore the outer area. I mean, I can rent a car, but it's not the same thing as like owning one, right? So the best part is the access to everything. Um, and there's a lot of immediacy with being able to get all of that stuff downtown. Um, the unfortunate other side of it is I just don't see much of the outskirts of Toronto, so I can feel very um, localized to the downtown core. Okay, and two last questions that I picked up from Instagram this morning. Sam has asked me the most horrible question she could possibly have ever come up with. Like, I, does she hate me? Cause this is horrible. <laughs> Would you rather give up wine or wearing bright makeup? I tell you what, I've sat here and I've thought about the answer to this and I am really struggling with it. Oh, I think right now I would give up bright makeup because I'm in quarantine and I need my wine right now. But I would, would I be happy for the rest of my life without bright eye makeup? Probably not. Right now I'm going with wine, but I don't know if it's the right choice. God, that is a miserable question, Sam. How dare you? <laughs> And the last question she asked me is, uh, is there a makeup trend or color you used to hate and now love? I don't think I ever really hated yellow eyeshadow, which I'm wearing right now, 
but I don't think it, I ever really thought of it as a good thing to wear, but now I'm in love with it. However, I guess there is one trend that I did hate, but it kind of morphed over the years. So people used to use Max Fascinating Eye Cold, that really white pencil on their lower waterline, um, like 10, 12 years ago on YouTube, because it would, was opening up your eyes. And I always thought the white looked absolutely atrocious, just looked awful. Over time, people kind of morphed into using more of like a um, skin color for whatever skin tone they were, uh, a lower waterline color in order to brighten up the area as opposed to using white. And for the longest time, I thought that that looked not as bad as the white, but still looked pretty eh. However, in recent years, I have started to do it and I really like it. So I guess that's a trend that <laughs> I picked up like a decade later, but I did really think that that looked garbage like 10, 12 years ago. But hey, now I'm the one that's doing that. Okay, so that is it for the questions. I hope I picked up everything that people had asked me. Thank you so much for sending questions in. It definitely helped me flesh out this video. So I hope you learned something new and interesting about me today. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to chat about things that I would otherwise not have talked about. Um, and that's it. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.